All right, this is going to be a quick little video for Algebra 2. Let me write up here, this is Algebra 2. And this is from Lesson 26. And I'm just going to do a few from your homework if you're still struggling with the hyperbola. Hopefully everybody was in class and they got this lovely worksheet. I would suggest that you pull this worksheet out while you're doing your assignment, okay? Because these little things up here at the top are going to let you give a good clue what your graph's going to look like before you even get started. So I'm going to keep referring back to this as we do your homework. All right, when I do this one, I want to move this x over here on this side. Notice on this side, if you're dividing by x, when you move it over here, you'd be multiplying by x. So it's actually going to look like this, xy equals negative 3. So I'm just moving this over here. Now notice, this number right here, this constant, is a negative. So when I go back to my worksheet, I'm like, okay, when the number's negative, it should look like this, okay, my graph. So really, you only need to plot a few points. Now, 3 is a not a very fun number because there's not a lot of factors of 3. So let's just do a couple here. And here's what I know. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. You know, I want a few more points than that, so I might be like, well, one-third times nine. Hopefully everybody can see that that would also be three, okay? And then this would be nine times one-third, but it's negative. So let's make these negative right here. So hopefully everybody sees when I multiply this together, that would give me negative three. So let's graph that real quick, and let's see what we get. This is one, negative three. So I'm going to come over here, one, negative three, one, two, three, there it is. And then I've got 3, negative 1 right here. So I'm going to go over 3, down 1. 1 third. Now you're going to have to just estimate this. 1 third, negative 9. 1 third is just, gosh, really close to here. And then we're going to go down 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So about right here. And then we have 9 and negative one third. So I think this is 8, 9, and then just down a little bit. So you can see right here that my graph is going to look something like this down here in this quadrant. By the way, this is quadrant one, two, three, four. Okay? Now, my other quadrant is going to be just like this, but change your signs. So, what I'm going to do, I mean, I've already done all my work. Why would I do my work again? If I make this negative, then this is going to have to be positive because that way when I multiply them together, I get negative three. So, I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to change all my signs. It's going to be a positive, negative, positive. Okay, like that. So now graph these. Negative 1, 3. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go negative 1, 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to go negative 3, 1. 1, 2, 3. Negative 3, 1. And honestly, 1, 2, negative 3, 1. That's good enough. Let's just, because I kind of already know what it's going to look like. I got two points. Okay, remember these lines right here, see how it's getting really, really close to the x-axis, to the line, that's the line y equals zero. It's not going to ever, ever touch it, but it's going to get really close to it. Same thing down here, it's going to get close to this, but never touch it. Okay, same thing here. And that's really good enough on that one. Okay, same thing here. You want to get your xy on one side. Notice that this is a negative xy. When I move it over here, I'm going to get a positive xy. So we're going to do that. Notice this is a positive number, so it's going to go over here. See, this is positive. This constant is just a boring number. It's positive, so it's going to be in these quadrants, 1 and 3. So just do enough points where you can kind of get, gosh, two points. How about that? So think of factors of 4. 1 times 4, 4 times 1, and then how about this, 2 times 2. That's actually enough points right there. So let's plot those. Um, 1, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1, and then 2, 2, 1, 2. And so I already know it's going to look something like this, okay? And again, if you change the sign, now i got to do this quadrant right here. Notice if they're both negative, so I'm going to change all the signs. That would also give me a positive 4 when you multiply those together. Negative 1 times a negative 4 is positive 4. So... Plot those three points, negative one, negative four, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I keep glancing back to my phone to make sure I haven't made my screen like move. One, two, three, four, negative one, and then there's negative two, negative two, right there. And so I'm going to sketch this in like that. 
So it should look something like that. Okay, so there's your first two done already. When you get ready to do this one, just divide both sides by negative 3, get the xy by itself. Okay, it's obviously going to be xy equals negative 6, so it's going to look a lot like this one. Points are just going to be slightly different. Okay, let's look at this one. All I can say to this is gross. Okay, they try to make this look gross, but realize it's equal to 1. Okay, and I'm subtracting, so I know it's a hyperbola. I honestly would write this one like this, x squared over 10. That's what that means, 1 tenth minus y squared over 5 equals 1. So much easier to see. Now, my vertex is still at 0, 0, so here's my vertex right there. This one, they are not so nice in this book, but let's find the square root of 10 because that's how far I know to move. Sorry, my book's buckling. So I'm going to hit that in my calculator real quick, and it says it's about 3.2. So I'm going to say this. It's about 3.2. So what I'm going to do on the x-axis is I'm going to move 3 and a little bit more. 1, 2, 3, and just a little bit more. I'm going to do that in the other direction. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit more. Okay? This one, hit in your calculator the square root of 5. So I'm coming over here to my calculator real quick, and I'm going to hit that in and that's about 2.2. Okay, so you're just gonna have to estimate it on this. So notice, this is under my y, so and y always goes up and down. Think about your y-axis. So I'm gonna go up and down 2.2 from the center. So I'm gonna go up two and a little bit more, and down to one, two, and a little bit more. Okay, now if this was an ellipse, if you were adding, you would know it's an ellipse. You would be done. You would just draw a pretty little ellipse in there, but it's not. It's a hyperbola. I know it's a hyperbola because I'm subtracting, okay? So what you're going to do at this point is you're going to make that pretty little rectangle in here. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Sorry, I'm not even... So I'm using a gel pen, so it's kind of hard. So remember what I told you. Do your rectangle, then make your diagonals, a low battery and we're just going to tell it to ignore that for a minute. I'm going to do your diagonals like that. So gosh, it looks pretty, doesn't it? Okay, and then I am going to pull out a different color and I'm ready to sketch in my hyperbola. And by the way, since the X came first, it's going to be on this axis. It's going to be on the X axis. And you can tell that. Look, go back to my worksheet right here. Notice I'm subtracting and um, the X comes first, so it's going to look like this, okay? So what you want to do is this point that's on your rectangle, that is actually on a hyperbola. You have two vertices, but you're going to come through like this, like that, okay? And I'm going to do the same thing here. Use that point, hug those diagonal lines. Remember those diagonal lines are called your asymptotes. It's an imaginary line. That's why I just dotted it. It's an imaginary line that your graph will approach but never cross. Okay, it's never even going to touch it. It's just going to get closer and closer to it. Okay, and that is good enough. So yeah, they were kind of mean right there. All right, let's try another one. All of these, the book is just wicked mean. I know this is a hyperbola. Okay, why do I know that? Because I have both things squared and I'm subtracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide everything by 8. Gross. This one's definitely gross. Okay, so notice what I have here. 2 is going to go into 8 four times. So this is going to be a 4. Okay, right there. Um, this one is going to be kind of gross. So how would you write that? You would actually write that as... Okay, let me show you a little trick. This I could write this as 8 over 2. Watch this in this denominator. I could pull this down as 8 over 2. And notice what 8 over 2 is. It's 4. So this one I'm going to write as 8 over 3. Now that is weird, but that's how you write it. When you got a number up here, you can just pull it down. I promise it's the same thing. Okay? It looks weird, I know. And that's going to equal 1. And I didn't do one like that in class. I don't know why they're making these so so mean, okay? But again, it did, I just want you to see how that worked here. Notice on that eight, everybody agrees, 
they can understand this, that that's a 4. So how did I get that? You can pull the 2 under the 8, just like that, and 8 over 2 is 4. You can do that same thing with the 3, pull it under the 8. It just so happens it doesn't simplify very pretty. Okay, well notice that the center is still 0, 0. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to put it on 0, 0. How far do I go up and down? Notice this is under the y. When you take the square root of 4, you get 2. So I'm going to go up and down 2. So here we go. I'm going to go up 2, down 2. It's going to look just like that. This one is 8 thirds. So in your calculator, hit 8 divided by 3. So really, I want this in my calculator, 8 thirds. So I'm going to come over here real quick and do that. And I'm going to do 8 divided by 3. You can do fractions. I'm not going to do it. but And then I'm going to hit the square root button, which is right here. And look, I get about 1.6. So that is about 1.6 right there. Okay, so let me do a little wave. That number is under the x. And we know the x-axis runs this direction. So from my center, I'm going to go 1.6, which is 1 and a little bit more than halfway both directions. Okay. If it was an ellipse, I would just dot, I mean, I'd, I'd have a pretty little ellipse. If this was adding, it would be an ellipse, but because it's subtracting, it's a hyperbola. So I'm going to make this little dotted line right here. Not dotted, this dotted rectangle. Okay. Then you're going to do your diagonals like this. There's your diagonals, just like always. Let me grab a different color. Okay, so look at here, you're subtracting and the y came first. So go to your little worksheet over here where you're subtracting and the y came first and notice it's going to look like this. Okay, so just do that. To use that little point that's actually on your rectangle, use that. That's a vertice right there. And there you go. Use the one on the bottom and there you go. Okay, and that should do it. There you go.